Uh, so I've been training, like I said, I don't know, like like five years, something like that. And three years, uh, I was pretty much inconsistent. You know, we're losing all the time. Uh, I've been trying many different chat rooms with Sykes and all that. You know, I, before I was talking shit about Sykes, but actually I'm thankful, you know, that I met him because, you know, he was the one who actually showed us that you don't have to be super smart, super rich, you know, to be, to enter the stock market and, you know, try to find a way, you know, um, find a way to make some money, you know, from uh, from the stock market. I didn't find consistency through Sykes and I was looking around many different uh, ch uh, chat rooms here and there just about to give up. MIC show up, you know, Bob was talking about how he wants to, you know, change the whole situation about trading, you know, to show the right way how to make money, you know, use risk management and all the other stuff. And he was actually talking the real thing, you know, real trading, where to sell, buy, whatever, you know, no matter, you know, it just yeah. lines, you know. So, like I said, I tried it a couple of times, a couple of weeks. I find some consistency there. But um, I was really low with the money back then, so I needed to go back, do my job, you know, whatever I was doing. I was driving truck back then, yep. and I was studying a lot when I was uh, when I was uh, driving. I saved pretty much, you know, at least two years, you know, like Bao said, two years for uh, paying bills and all of the other shit, you know, that you don't have to be like worry about. Yeah. And yeah, I started with a really like. 100 shares, man, like 100 shares, 500 shares total or something. And, you know, slowly I was like pushing size and, you know, uh, trying to make more of here and there, you know, having also losing. But, you know, as long as you have your um, risk management intact, you know, and if you know how much you're going to lose and you're fine, you know, like you're literally fine. You know? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. We have gone over like a lot of things so far. Um, I guess like, um, cause like you, you are like, you're killing it right now. You know, you, you have some great charts in the room. Not gonna um, lose, not gonna lose, you know. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. so, I mean, maybe you can kind of go a bit into kind of like, I know you do use the MIC process, but, um, I guess like you see a stock kind of get, get on your scanner. It kind of pops up. What's your kind of process to kind of like evaluate something like that? And then how do you kind of go about like selecting lines and stuff like that? Because I know that's going to be what people want to know because, you know, you post your charts in the room, people love them. You know, people are going to be really interested, I think, in your kind of process and kind of your mindset towards kind of, you know, maybe maybe you see like a, you know, a hot chick kind of pop up on your screen. You want to take some short, you feel it's a bit overextended or something like that. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but just kind of your process, you know, geared towards that type of stuff. I mean, I have many different strategies that I use. Like I use at least seven, eight, I will say, you know, strategies that I call, you know, whatever you call it. But so, for example, first of all, I don't have any scanner, so I don't do none of the scanners, zero scanner. I, whatever you guys post there in the morning, mo, mo, like Tom or other guys, you know, Joe or something, they're posting it. Um, and then I kind of figure out what is hot, you know, what is like, what is up, you know, what is yeah. 20, 30, 50 percent up, you know. Then I put a ticker on my main screen, spread it out, you know, I put it like time frame, sometimes three days, sometimes five days sometimes six months, a year, two years. Yeah. And I see where it's like a good resistance point, you know? Yeah. I don't do nothing crazy, nothing like else than MIC teaches pretty much, you know, the Bao, whatever, everything is trading fish videos and uh, Bao Golden Nuggets, those are my favorite too. I watch them almost every day, even, you know, like every day or pretty much all the time. And uh, so what I do, you know, I, for example, have specific share amount that I want to, uh, use for that day for the ticker. I know max loss in that ticker I'm going to use on that like specific uh, loss in that ticket that they're going to use. And I see the lines where like good resistance points from the previous one, you know. Yeah. And people see, you know, like on the front side, many people ask me like, how you short front side? First of all, I don't use like big size on the front side. You know, it's only like 30, 40%. Yeah. If I see big resistance that I might use a little bit more, but I will have higher risk. Yeah. Uh, but it usually, you know, end up really bad when you fight the trend, you know, so you don't want to do that. You yeah. always want to like, you know, yeah. use okay size that you're going to be able to add more, do other stuff. And is uh, a lot of this channeling, you know, so I get a little bit, I mean, I don't use crazy size. It's like from thousand to 10,000 shares, you know, that's, and 10,000 shares 
usually is when I'm down, you know, when I'm averaging up to kind of, you know, get my position better, you know, like, but, uh, so, <clears throat> and uh, with that amounts, you can make it e not easy, but you can make pretty much thousand to 3000 bucks. That's day, you know, yeah. 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 That's the same yeah. thing to do as well. And not for me for now, you know, yeah. like I find some consistency, not going to do it. And I'm going to just push it, go slowly. Yeah. Don't risk much. And, you know, I'm fine losing two, 3000 bucks in a day, even five, yeah. not big deal, you know, because I know I'm going to make it in a day or two days, three days yeah. a week, no yeah. matter. So yeah, man. I mean, yeah. that's like a short, you know, yeah. way of yeah, talking. Yeah. Um, I noticed that you did talk about kind of the resistance from like, either the previous day or off a daily chart when it's on the front side. Yeah, I think that's also important to know because like when you kind of get that front side move before the top is set, the only lines that you really have to work with are off the daily chart and are off those kind of previous levels, you know. But once the top is set, then you have those other kind of levels that have been kind of drawn out for you that you're able to kind of take a trade off of. Okay, James is back now. What's up? <laughs> Oh, right. Kind so. of talking about the beginning of his journey and just stuff like that. Um, okay. And just like kind of like picking lines after the top is set. That's what I'm kind of talking about right now. Um, oh. And so, you know, so is, so is that kind of your process as well? Cause that's kind of what I do is like, if, if we don't have kind of clear edge lines from like a top being set, then I'm going to look at kind of the daily chart and things before. Um, that's kind of what you do as well. I mentioned that I use a lot like a float, you know, you don't want to mess with a low float with a yeah. size. So the, the smaller float, the less size you have to use because low float is jumpy as crazy, you know, it can go dollars like nothing, you know, go through all of the lines, even if there is a big resistance line on the left or year or whatever. Yeah. When it's low float, that thing can rip like nothing. So you have to be really careful, like watching the float and, um, I also don't like high institution ownership. You know, I really don't like that. I usually lose on that kind of setups. So I, I, I trade them too, but I look outer, outer lines, like old way, like, you know, like fantasy on top of fantasy or else, you know, like you don't mess with them. So I like to short a lot uh, first resistance. You know, I figure out that's like really, uh, good strategy for shorting, you know, like when the top, when the sh stop. Or like if this is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The no, second yeah. time you short it, you have pretty fine risk, you know, like, um, so yeah, just place order. I know it's scary for most people, like, hey, they ask me, like, how you doing, you know, here and there. You always predefine your risk, you know, put whatever share size you're fine and add like two three four ads i like to have more ads because i, I don't want to miss move you know so i have all the way down and all the way up you know and for yeah. example i'm gonna share this one i might help someone i use uh so the bottom the bottom shorts are like smaller size and then i'm kind of doubling up you know not all the time but for example i use 500 i use thousand i use thousand i use like three thousand if i have five thousand max position yeah or whatever six seven thousand shares you know but it's like i said you know i don't go full size immediately i always like you know making 50 bucks 100 bucks 200 bucks over and over all the time adds up i mean i made like i'm gonna share i don't care i made like what is today one what is the one it kind of fucked me up a little bit but i made like 1500 today and yeah. i'm good man you know it's it's nothing yeah. crazy day nothing but pays the bills and you know yeah. good day you know sometimes it's much better sometimes it's like you know less but the green is green so. yeah. no i do yeah. i like that idea of like um yo james good you're good okay no no no, no I, i'm you, not talking that's you <laughs> you're kind of like lagging a little bit i was gonna say i was is it fine now yeah keep going you can talk now yeah Sorry, I don't know why it's, I mean, I have full, whatever. I guess my biggest question for you is like, I, everyone that messages me like about questions about your chart stuff and pretty much everyone wants to know like how you're so confident. Because sometimes it even looks like there's no clear resistance level or, you know, sometimes you're like, you're hitting tops of things consistently that the chart is even formed. Like, I know you're going back and seeing that, but how long did it take you to get that confidence to like size into those trades and actually take them as they came? Because you're matching Bow's trades. 
like I said, I don't use crazy side on the front side. You know, when you see me like catching the top, it's like, you know, I don't use, I use thousand shares the most, like three, three bullets, 300 shares. And I'm fine, man. Stocks go down 10, 20 cents. I'm taking off like 50 bucks, hundred bucks. I mean, sometimes I go with bigger sides, but most of the time it's like thousand, two, three thousand shares the most, you know, that I'm using on yep. the front side or something, you know? So, I mean, I'm pushing myself, trying to figure out, you know, the ways how I'm going to expand my thing. You know, I know my setups where I make the most of money that that candle like through with up and then pushing like when the when the stocks is like my my favorite setup is uh, so that that candle when they go through with up yep. and then when the when the and the stocks go up I short every pop because you have pretty fine risk and there is a lot of longs stuck on top so there is yep. a lot of people who wants to get out you know for small loss or break even you know so I'm yeah popping that one so, but lately so the biggest thing with you that well what's good with yeah. you is like I think the biggest lesson that I think all traders should take is that one, you aren't trying to hammer size every single trade. Right. And that allows you to be comfortable, right? Like you're, you have wiggle room. You're not so nervous if the stock goes against you because what I love about your charts is they never seem uncontrolled, but you always seem to be on top of the trade and like always in the driver's seat. And I think that's where newer traders really struggle is they get so spooked when the stock goes against them, but you've learned to size so comfortably that you don't ever seem to panic when it goes against you. For that, but you know, the last size you use that, I mean, for, for some people, 10,000 shares is like nothing, you know, for some people, 1,000 yeah, shares is a lot. Foot. So you just, you just have to find a sweet spot where it's good for you, what makes you money, you know, like, I guess I don't compete with no one. I really like when people say, telling, telling me that, you know, like you have similar charts with Bao and it is, yep. lately it is like that, you know, but like I said, I yep. find my sweet spot shorting outer, outer lines with a less size and even with less size man you can like get and make like nice money you know 100 to 300 bucks in a trade and a clip over and over i mean yeah. come on like you know it's not that bad and adds up you know over time over i don't do nothing than trading you know i only trade so i have all day yeah. for myself so yeah yeah I, I just wait yeah how did you find your sweet spot with size like, how did you get to, like, understand, like, okay, these are the levels I'm comfortable using this size at. Did you ever have a moment where you oversized or, you, like, you got screwed up for that? Almost or did this every, make Yeah, every day. I mean, before, like, I was really pushing size that, you know, I had money back account since I was driving that truck. And uh, I was willing to lose 10, even 15,000 in a day, you know. I, I wouldn't. Jesus. It would be a lot, but, you know, I will be. I still had some money in the back. I'll be okay, you know, but yep. I did a couple of times lost like 15, 20, 30K, man. Even more, you know, I don't want to talk, but yeah. it, was, it was really bad, you know. It cost me like a lot, you know. At some point, I actually needed to go back again and uh, drive truck again, clear my mind, and um, that was the hardest part, actually. I lost 180,000 in three days last year. Wow. So, yeah, and uh, I was really kind of fucked up because I lost almost 90, uh, 80, 90 percent of what I made a whole year. So I lost it in three days. That was Jesus. really hard for me. Yeah, I was like locked in a room, yep. you know, I was like, it was really hard, you know, to for me to to go again, you know, and I was like, fuck this shit, you know, I'm going to go back truck again, make some money, clear my mind. I know what I'm doing. I know that I can make money, you know, so. I was like, I'm going to clear my mind a little bit. Went trucking again one month or two, three. I don't know how long it was. And when I came back, I was like, okay, you know, you don't want to play with more size that, you know, you are comfortable to lose. So I put myself max daily last 10K and that's all. Like, you know, if I lose 10K, that's done. No more, you know, finish. I yeah. can I can enter the trade and, you know, and I will be able to make the money back, you know. So the, that, that's the most important thing to lock yourself to a certain amount that you will be able to make that in a week or two weeks or something like that, you know, to don't hurt that much. Mm -hmm. so, Mentally, how did you get back from that? Because that's like a lot of money for some people, right? That's it, like... It was, that's honestly, I, I came from Serbia, man. Like all yeah. of that money, it's like a lot, you know. I never Dude, yeah. had a, you know, like, it's just a lot of money, you know. And uh, I was like, it was so hard for me. Like I said, you know, I didn't talk to no one pretty much, you know, and I didn't say no one. Uh, when that happened, I was really quiet with myself, you know, trying to figure out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to get out of the hole. 
<clears throat> so yeah, I went tracking all by myself. It was so fucking hard, you know, but um, yeah, I was like, I want to do this shit. You know, I want to trade. I love trading. Gives me a lot of freedom and gives me stuff that I want. So, you know, making thousand bucks doing pretty much nothing. I mean, not nothing, but what we do, we click buttons and I'll say here. Yeah. It's not Bro, that, that, you know. That is crazy so I, to me. Like, yeah. That is crazy. Like, did you have friends and family? Did they know like how much of a loss you took or did you kind of keep that private for a while? I told, I, told, I told everyone after that happened. So, you know, they're like, you're a gambler, you're here and there, you know, you yeah, should bro. quit, you should do it here and there. But I always believe myself. And uh, even right now, I mean, it's hard, man. It's freaking hard. We all know that this shit is not easy, you know. But yeah, if we have a good rest, risk management, if you follow the rules that MIC creates, there's so many rules, man. And you have to, you have to trade after 10 30 i mean he might trade but he never posted a chart or something probably he doesn't trade man like you know and that's one of the biggest rule for a short selling you know don't short after 10 30 wait 2 p.m it's like you know reversal hours here and there for me it's still hard to uh to get away from the desk you know after 11 or something but i do when i make for example when i make money that i want i leave the house and i'm done i turn off you know and it's really hard because it's never enough, you know, no matter how much you make, it will be always, oh man, I want a little bit more. I want a little bit more. And then after 20 minutes, you are like zero or minus whatever, you know? So yeah, it's always have, bottom yeah. battle, man. I just have one quick question. Um, yeah. And it has to do with the kind of losses that you just talked about, because like, I mean, there's a lot of things that definitely can be learned. Um, I mean, I just, I just have like a couple questions. I don't mean to hammer you on the topic because I know it is. It's mine. It's done. I'm over it. But maybe you I want to dig into that loss. <laughs> maybe no, but from me personally as a trader, I mean, maybe you could talk about maybe your mindset, like leading up to those days. Like, did it? Did you? Did you feel like any pressure to make money, or did they just come out of the blue, or like maybe there was just something going on that you didn't realize? Um, because like, I mean, I find like, like if I look back in my trading career, like, and I have one big, big loss that was accidental that I didn't mean to lose that much money at all. I didn't mean to be that oversized in the fucking trade. Like that was, really? fucking it was just <laughs> that was fucking <laughs> bullshit. But, um, like as far as my other, like kind of like big ish losses go, they always came around like if there was like an issue in like relationships or just like, if I wasn't really taking my health seriously and I was just like drinking and on a run, or if there was just shit like that going on, or I had a bill or something like that, but was there anything kind of leading up in your like life or lifestyle that kind of maybe triggered you to go into that zone or anything like that? Maybe. Um, honestly, my life was pretty much okay back then. I didn't have anything crazy about it. You know, like I was just fighting the trend, you know, trying to, I was actually longing first time when I lost 60 K I was longing, man. Like, and I tried to catch the top. It went all the way under we up. And I was like, man, this shit has to bounce. I started with like stock was $19 and I started with 500,000, 2000 shares. I think like 4,000 shares or something. And then yeah. my max, max, whatever I, I add, it was like, I think like around, around 350,000, you know, $350,000 with margin and all that. And I 40,000 in that, then that, that, that day and went a little bit more down. And I started like, buy, like covering, like, uh, selling the selling my position yeah and you know the stock was still going down and as oh soon as i sold God. everything stock bounce like after our bounce all the way up it was some bullshit uh the bill gates companies something bill gates was uh pumping that shit or something i don't know like oh shit, honestly yeah, that, was even... that was a covid one wasn't it yeah so first day i lost 60k then second day, I was like, man, that's a, that's a lot, you know, I, that's a lot, I'm going to make it back, you know, bam, again, like, slamming the sides, didn't even know, 100% all emotional, 100% all emotional trading. I was down again, 10K, I was like, no, man, I can't take that loss, bam, again, 50K, like, like that, I was shorting, it went against me, like, nothing, you know, 
And then third day I, I was down like, I mean, I think 100, 100, 100K or 90K or something like that. And then third day I was like, fuck it, you know, this is the day that I'm gonna get back. And then again, you know, like messing all around, doing crazy shit. Yeah. And I, I was like sitting here in the room like that. And I was like, man, I saw my account, I saw everything. And I was like, man, what the fuck just happened? You know, it was so bad. Like four days, I, I have a roommate, you know, he didn't even like, he didn't realize, he just figured out that I was quiet. But, you know, I still go out, play tennis, do my shit, playing basketball, you know, but it was so bad, like hard in my mind too. But yeah, I caught it, like I said, I don't want to talk about that. It. It's done. It's over. I don't want to put myself in that position like that no more. Right. I have my risk. I have like Max Daly on a, on a broker level. I have Max Daly on a ticker. I have many other like stuff around, you know, so yeah. it won't happen no more. I just want to look for a better trade, good trade, and make your money. Wait, man. I don't want longs that you lost on, or were a couple of them? No, short? it was it was one long and two in two shorts. And one long and two shorts. Yeah, because yeah, that I mean, a year ago, like that that whole like or year and a half, however long ago, market was crazy. We had extreme volatility to the upside, extreme volatility to the downside. I remember a ton of those stocks would just go up, have a ton of chasers, and then they just wouldn't bounce because we have so many people who bought at the highs and were stuck that every single pop would just get sold off and sold off and sold off. And everyone's like, oh, why is first bounce not working? And I'm like, bro, we have so many people who are longing at prices like 19, 20 bucks that by the time it even reaches 16 and $15 and they're underwater, you think there's anyone buying? There's not even shorts underwater because they've all got squeezed on the front side because the moves were so fucking insane. And that's why I was like, like boys, like you need to be shorting or you need to be longing first bounces on tickers that no one knows, not on like the 18th day of friggin' CCIV or whatever, these friggin' crazy Kodak or these crazy stocks that like we have players all over, you know? And that that was what was most insane to me is the amount of volatility to the upside and the lack of bounces on the downside and just the lack of follow through on just kind of like just for any type of bounce on the on the upside really since that day when that happened you know my my biggest loss i never long <laughs> i do from here from time to time you know like from time to time along here and there but you know because i have zero long strategies you know like literally zero so yeah. i I, I would love to have at least one or two you know to kind of figure out some stuff you know you know, I'm pretty good with covers. So I was thinking, you know, why you don't go long, you know, when you cover, you know, your short position, you know, but a lot of our covers do seem to match up when they when it bounces, you know, I mean, I'm sure if you double long, Honestly, I love your commentary, you know, you're really helpful in a room, you know, like when the people are saying when you're saying like, hey, you know, this is not what I like, you know, I'm like, okay, what is the line that I want if the Harry doesn't want, you know, honestly, like, I know you put so much time, you know, in tape reading and do other shit, you know, and it's just, it's, it's like when you alert, I mean, alert, when you say, Hey, yeah, yeah. this is not what I'm looking for or something, bro, I'm there, you know, I'm like waiting for that yeah. pop or well, we have whatever, you know, we have tag teamed a lot, bro. Like, I don't know if that's the right word to fucking say, but we know. have a lot of instances <laughs> where we're both in the yeah. chat and like, well, even today, I was like, I wouldn't want to short under five on PRPO. That I literally tagged you on it. Like, under five, I I short. We ended up going to yeah. 530. I don't know if you shorted when it got above highs. But um, I remember I messaged you and I was like, bro, like, or I just tagged you in the chat. I, and I was like, bro, I wouldn't want to. There was another time on PRPO too, where it was trading at like six bucks. And I was like, eh, I'm not longing this breakout or whatever. I'd rather just short it. And I believe we both nailed the short. I just didn't post it, but we both nailed the fucking short on it. Yeah. And Sweet, I was man. like, oh, but I mean, it's dope. Cause like, I just, I love those. Like, I really love those like in the moment plays where you have a good read on something and you're able to share it. Like, cause there are times, right? Yeah, that, that comes with screen time a lot, you know. Yeah. Honestly, that that comes a lot with screen time. Yeah, there is a line here and there, but you know, sometimes it's just feeling, you know, like it is like a little bit of feeling in a trade, you know. It's not all the time like hey, black and white. You know, there is many things in between, purple, yellow, green, 
all around, you know, and it's up to you. What is your risk in a moment? And yeah, man, I love trading. Honestly, like trading is so freaking um way because it's so hard to to kind of figure out, you know, the yeah. way how to, yeah. you know. Yeah, I think so, it's really true because like your size also like the sizing that you talked about, a lot of it for me at least comes on when I can get a good read. Like if there, if I have a really good read on like, I think his stuff is coming or I think whatever's coming, I'm okay with taking some short, you know, I'm okay with that. If I really think a bounce is coming, I'm okay with sizing in a little bit larger because I just have that extra conviction in my gut. And that's what really comes with experience. I, I, I will support it hundred percent to be honest. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And I think a big, I think something I'm beginning. Something I'm super interested in is like, Stefan, you have such a clear appetite for risk, right? Like I, like, I don't know many people who can throw on size like that early on and like not be terrified, right? So like how, I know you, have, yeah. you have conviction now, but how do you keep yourself from like diving back into that level of like risk and like not was, being like afraid, yeah. Again, we, we probably talking about my loss, you know, that I have crazy loss. Honestly, like, I was 100% sure that this thing is going to bounce. And I used size that I was, like, you know, not comfortable at all, you know. Like, I used, like, it was, I think, 17 or $18, $18 and I put, like, um, buy. Immediately, like, 18000 bucks, And then went down, and I was down, like, 4000 bucks or something. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to, this is, this is, that bottom has to be. Bam, double size, whatever amounts of money. Bam down. I had more. Bam down. I was like, what the yeah. fuck? Like, I couldn't get a bounce to get, like, at least smaller loss or break even that I was hoping, you know, never get that loss. That's yeah. why I short a lot that kind of thing because I know the feeling how it is when I was, like, praying, please, please, fucking bounce. You know? yeah. <laughs> bounce, please. You yeah. know? <laughs> I was literally praying, bro. Like, train to God, God you don't know. Listen, you know? <laughs> yeah. I know, but I think that that's a good lesson because – when you, yeah. when you have longed before shorting, you understand so much. And if you've shorted before longing, you also understand so much. Because I remember when I first started shorting, I was slamming the lows. I saw a little bit of a red ticker. I'm like this comp or, you know, a red candle. I was like, this company is a piece of shit. It's going down. I'm slamming the lows. It doesn't matter what price I get in at. It's still going lower. I can slam it lower. I don't need to short pops. And that's the same thing as when you're longing at the highs, really. I mean, when we all clown people who are longing at the highs, but if you're shorting the lows, you're doing the exact same thing, you know, exact same thing. Yeah, I also want to I also wanna say about what really helps me a lot with my short game is I stop chasing. I stop chasing low. I do once in 20 trades that I, that I go chase, you know. Yeah. I go chase, but do, you don't want to share, uh, like... Um, stock is like going down you don't want to short wait for a pop yeah. wait for a pop and short that pop you know yeah i agree completely i agree 100 percent. yeah you got to be shorting the pops and you got to be willing to long the dips and it is a bit scary it is it, i mean it you're not comfortable but the more you do it and the more experience you gain that's how you really grow an account and get consistency and that's how you really get the best risk reward for your trades absolutely you have to put the biggest... orders there the, the biggest thing that like Stefan, I think shows like traders, like newer guys in MIC is that once you reach that level of confidence in yourself and in your setups, like attacking things aren't scary anymore. And you've like developed almost like your own sizing system that allows you to kind of do anything. And I mean, I see you trading like penny stocks or like $10 stocks to $20 stocks. And you kind of trade the exact yeah. same way every time. Yeah. I mean, come on, every single thing what awesome. I learned, every, every single thing what I learned is from Bao. If you look his charts, it's just freaking art in my mind, man. Like, yeah, that guy is just amazing what he does. You know? it, it is. And, you know, but we can do it too. Come on, like, practice with a small size. Go, why would you short low if you can wait for a, if you can wait for a pop and short the first resistance, for example, you know? What, like if you miss that's fine you miss then wait for another setup maybe that candle and then short the pop so there is one one um 
one stock in a day, there is at least five setups or five different ways how you can trade. You know, it's up to you. Would you gonna go? Would you gonna go long, short? What is the risk? How much you gonna risk? Well, you know, but there is so much opportunities all around. You know, like to 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 trade. Absolutely. I mean, again, you don't have to use crazy size. I never had like Alex, like Alex days or Bao days, 50, 100,000 bucks in a day. Hope one day, you know, when the market and everything goes crazy, you know, but again, but, you know, making again, like 500 bucks, 1,000, 3,000 bucks, man. It's good money. <laughs> I, I, Dude, what's, what's amazing about you is like you've been to the highest of like you've had the lowest of lows and like you I'm, I'm ready I don't I know <laughs> many for traders who are able, yeah I don't <laughs> I don't know how many traders who can rewire their brain to like accept like a $1,500 day which is an amazing day but like I seriously like commend you I think it's like fucking insane and seeing you do it at a consistent level like I'm telling you many people would take those losses and quit and they'd be done I mean, I can't say I'd stomach it. So it's insane. Lost, it's impressive. All of that money, when I lost, it was all my fault, bro. It was emotional trading. It was not planned trading. It was random bullshit trading. You have your own plan, you know, place order and have a stop, you know, and you're fine. If you lose 100 bucks, you're fine. You pre-plan that, that, that trade and you're good. You can't take, like, you can't be mad at yourself because you lost. It's just the setup didn't work you know, find a better setup, you know. That's awesome. I mean, Set it myself, it's crazy. So. It's to kind of end it on as well, because it's kind of been, I think, like 30, 40 minutes or something like that. I don't know, something like that. So yeah. that's good. Yeah, Harry, you want to wrap it up? Yeah, no, I mean, I just thought it was a really good chat. And um, yeah, thanks for coming on. Hey, I will need a haircut, man. When I come to Boston, I'll be like... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no.